Yes, sir. Come on, let's do it right here. Say, enter his gate. Enter his gate. to bless him this morning. Come on, if God has been an amazing God, somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. Hey, hey, we've come to pray. We've come to praise his name. We've come to pray. We've come to praise his name. We've come to pray. We've come to praise his name. We've come to praise his name. We've come to praise his name. Somebody help me. We've come to praise his name. We've come to praise his name. Y'all look like you feel like praising him.
to pray. We come to pray this day. Praise God and thank each 
you here for being on the prayer line this past Wednesday. Uh, God bless you. I will be on the prayer line this Wednesday as well. Uh, but I thought sometimes you want to bring real significant closure to situations, but sometimes before you can bring closures to your circumstances and to individuals and even your condition, you have to bring closure to yourself. You have to have closure. Um, so therefore, when we look at this passage of scripture, can I preach a little bit? When I look at this passage of scripture, and Mother Griffin is so good to see you. Thank you so much. I praise God for you. I'm not going to cry, but I thank God for you, Mama. When I was a teenager, you knew I was doing bad, but you never said anything, just prayed for me. And I thank you for your prayers. Let's praise God for my people. So, Tim. 10th verse, and I'm reading from the American uh, Version, translation, New King James Version, rather. Let us look at this. Do you have it? Yeah. Okay, how many of y'all have your apps or your Bibles? Okay, and God bless you. you know, y'all get off of Facebook and you turn to the Bible app. Don't <laughs> so be playing games in the balcony. It says here, and when Pharaoh drew near, when Pharaoh drew near, and you don't have to stand because I'm going to do an expository today. When Pharaoh drew near, there's something about being in bondage. And the children of Israel was in bondage. And God said, but I found out many times, can you all hear me pretty good? Yeah. I found out, and this is just for my personal life, we want, we, we really desire to be delivered. But we want to be delivered with stipulations. There are certain things that we want to hold on to, even though we want to be delivered. There are stipulations we want to just hold on. Sometimes it's, it's a habit. Sometimes it's, it's friendship or individual family members. Sometimes it's core. Whatever is like a weight on us, we find it hard to set aside. The baggage can be released, but the content is still a part of us. I was telling individuals this past week, I said, man, you know, he said, well, I'm, 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 I'm doing that, I'm doing this, I'm not doing this. And I said, well, okay, no problem. I said, well, if you are out of the situation, yeah. then you are not out of the situation. Yeah. 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 Then let the situation be out of you. I will, I will, I will. If you're out of a situation, let the situation be out of you. You know, if you're not, if you're not, if you, you know, if you, if you stop doing it, you're not doing it, then why are you still talking about it? Somebody said, when you're through, just be done with it. Be done, be done with it. Stop 
because the more you talk about it, that means that it's still a part of it. Emotions, emotions are, when you look at emotions, you can have hatred, and you can have what? Love. But whether it be love or hatred, is still part of your emotions. Because hatred, love, is still a part of you. And many times, the hate that we project upon an enemy or someone we dislike is not affecting them more so than it's affecting you. The hatred does not hurt the one that has been projected upon, but hatred hurts the hater. More heart attacks, strokes, aneurysms, and all kinds of conditions have been because people have not released the content that was in the bag. I was telling someone, I said this before, but I, I realize now in retrospect, I don't have what we call regrets. I have no regrets. But what I do have are lessons. No regrets, but a whole lot of lessons that we have learned. Tell somebody say, I got the lesson, I got the lesson. So he says here, he says when Pharaoh drew near, because they're out of, they're out of Egypt. So they, 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 they have made, and they're making their exodus. And they're making their exodus. They're making their exodus. And as a result of that, Jack and your, and your sister, y'all be careful going to get your daughter. Be careful. Okay, take your time now. They're driving crazy. Okay, I just want to mention that you just ain't leaving. You're going to the airport. Hurry, go ahead. Don't be late now. Okay, get, get her to the airport. God bless you. I was coming to church today, and Jack and met me in the vestibule. He said, Let me take this now. I'm going to be leaving going to the airport. I said, Don't be late now. God bless you. Let me, let me get back to my morning. <laughs> So the, ch the children of Israel lifted up their eyes because it, the Pharaoh drew near and the children of Israel lifted up their eyes. In other words, they turned their attention from going forward to turning backwards, looking at Pharaoh coming. Are y'all following me? Because yes, it was really good. So can we feel can we feel comfortable in saying that as, as believers we need to realize fear. The people cannot, we cannot fault the people for being very afraid. But fear itself is not sin. Let me say it again. Fear itself is not sin. And I'll help you understand that as we move on. But let me just say this to you. They lift up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. You're going to always have, don't miss this, you're going to always have, you're going to always have something that will distract you from where you're going. Even after you become delivered, right. 
and experience your excellence, you're going to still have something that will try to attract you to distract you from where you're going. Pharaoh's army was drawn near and they lifted up their eyes and behold the Egyptians marched after them. Pharaoh's army was drawn near they lifted up their eyes and they recognized that Pharaoh's army was after them. My first point is never think because you have been brought out of something that you are free from that which you have been brought out of. Never think that you have because you've been brought out of something that that oh, I didn't mean to holler, that you was brought out of something. Never think that you are free from that which you have been delivered from. Paul said, when I would do good, yes. the evil. Many of you right now, you would be much further than you are now if you had not lifted up your eyes and said, Pharaoh's army drawing near. He said here. He said here. Can I still a few more minutes? He said here. The Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid. Notice it says not that they were afraid. But they were very afraid. In other words, they were not just afraid, but they were very afraid. And that meant that, 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 that fear in itself is not sin. But whenever fear consumes not just your mind, but it consumes your very being that presents you to be inoperable, when it comes down to applying your faith, that's when fear becomes detrimental. Because we know wherever there's a fear, there's not operable faith. And wherever there's faith, it cancels the fear. But you they cannot dwell together. You can't say, I'm, I, I'm scared, but yet I'm going to... No, you either, you either you have faith or you are fearful. And many times, oh, priest Davis, many times, I, I, I have to say this, many times I must confess that I have been afraid, and sometimes very afraid. Very afraid. And I, and I can use the analogy of in 1 Kings, it talks about, in that, that chapter 6, I think it's something, chapter somewhere in there, it talks about the four leopards. And they were, they were in a place, and Caesarean was coming. And they, and they realized where they were being lepers. They say, if we go back, we're going to die. Yeah. And this is something that should be therapeutic. It should help you. If we go back, we're going to die. Because they had cannibalism going on where they came from. Yeah. And if we go back, we're going to die. If we stay where we are, we're going to die. Yeah. But if we, in peradventure, if we go forward, maybe God might have mercy upon us. And, and, and save us. And I came by, I don't have this in my notes, my mental notes, but I have to say this. You can't go backwards. You have to go forward. Let me say it again. You can't go backwards because sometimes God will close a door to keep you from going back. But the temptation of going back will always be present because we and say, oh, things ain't like they used to be. And they never will be like they used to be. People will 
will never be like they used to be. You can keep your doors open. You, 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 your neighbors were real neighbors. If they ain't, you ain't. Things are not going to ever be like they used to be. But one thing about it, you don't have to be like you used to be. Tell somebody, say, stop trying to change everybody else and change yourself. So he says here, let me hear y'all, he says here, he says here, so they were very afraid and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. They cried to the Lord. They cried out to the Lord. In their fear, they cried out to the Lord. In their fear, they lift up their hands to be healed from which come of their help. Now apply the same principle to life. The less interest 
you show towards stuff, the more God will bless you. But if your, if your desire is getting stuff and having getting stuff and getting stuff, getting money and getting cars and getting land, then that's your desire. But when God sees that you keep him first, you keep him first, you worship him, you praise him. And when God sees that the more he bless you, the more you praise him. The more he bless you, the more you worship him. Because you delight yourself in him. In him. And when you see, when he sees that stuff will not take you from him, that's when he can bless you. Come on, talk to me somebody. You got to know. He says here, preach, Davis, preach, preach, man. You only got a few minutes. Preach, preach. He says, then he, they cried out. Then they said to Moses, because there was, they went, they said to Moses, you always go back to the person that helped you. When challenges come, whenever somebody helps you to get out of something, you always blame them if it don't work out. They blame the Moses. They blame Moses. Look at him. He said, and then they said to Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Because there's no graves in Egypt. You brought us to the wilderness to die. Because deliverance cannot really become activated without your participation, and your participation takes faith. Never think because you are with something that it's just going to be a bed of flowers. Never will forget. I said, Lord, I should have stayed at Mount Calvary. Why did you call me to a church like St. John? No members of the gang, even $75 a week. I can't, why did you call me here? And the Lord spoke to me and said, Servant, this is your assignment. Now all I ask you to do is be faithful to your assignment. Because you're looking at where you are, but I'm preparing where I'm taking you. And many of you are looking at what you where you are, not realizing what God has in store for you. You know what I said a few weeks ago, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and in the hearts man what God has in store for them that love him. Is anybody in here that love the Lord? Do you really love him? Well go forward. They said that we should have had graves, graves in Egypt. No graves in Egypt. You have brought us out here to die in the wilderness. Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? In other words, they say, why you brought us out of Egypt? We could have been, we could have stayed in Egypt. Now I'm getting ready to say my second point. My second point is this. You cannot change people that don't want to change. You can't help people that don't want to help themselves. You can't give them something if they don't want it. Touch somebody and say, neighbor, I want to help you. But you got to help yourself first. How, touch somebody and say, how bad do you want it? Do you first after? Do you hunger after his word? Do you first after Jesus? Do you hunger? He said, why? With us to bring us out of Egypt. Isn't this not the word that we told you in Egypt? Saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. 
Let us alone. And let us serve the Egyptians. Now Egyptians were tax masters. They didn't care anything about them. In my second point, the second part of my second point is simply this. Why is it? Let us alone. We should have served the Egyptians. Why is it? that we feel more comfortable with people that mistreat us than people that have our interest at all. Why do we have more confidence in people that mistreat us than people that have our interest at heart? Why is it that those are just trying to take us to another dimension, another level, we, why is it that we we, we get stuck with folks that mistreat us, that don't care nothing about us, and we serve them more than we serve and we're nicer to them than those that have our interest at heart. The word we told you in Egypt said, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than for we to die in the wilderness. You mean to tell me you rather be in bondage and slavery than in spirit's freedom? I had to do a class a couple of months ago. And in this class, I was the second panelist. And I had to get up in 15 minutes, and I kept it within 15 minutes. And I said that people that have been incarcerated for over a period of time. That incarceration or that institution becomes their home. Which means that they become an institutionalized. That the outside becomes the, ins becomes the institution. And the institution becomes their home. Sometimes you can be in a situation for so long that that place that you become comfortable with it, that you feel that anything outside of that comfort zone is a threat to you. Say that, Doc. You want me to say it again? You've been around it so long. You've been around doing nothing for so long. You've been around people lying to you for so long. You've been around folks stroking your ego for so long. You've been around folks telling you got it going on for so long. You've been around situations that require no thought, require no, no actions at all, no participation or nothing. Everything was just handed to you for so long. That you like the person that said, Jesus said, look, you've been fishing. He said, we've been fishing all night, and our nets, we never caught anything. And we have experienced fishers, mariners, and we've been fishing. And Jesus said, launch out into the deep. And many times, God will tell us to launch out into the deep. But the first thing we'll say, Lord, I can't swim. Lord didn't ask you if you could swim. He said, lunge out into the deep because in the deep, that's where your faith must be applied. But in the deep, the unknown is where your blessings are. It's not, it's not. In shallow water, it's in the deep. That you gotta launch out. 
you got to get out of your comfort zone. Then you got to break out of, my next point, you got to break out of strongholds. Because when you're used to being in something over a period of time, it builds up a strong element around you that keeps you from breaking out. Talking to God the other day, I said, man, I've been married. Mayor, uh, this year, 25 years ago, he made me some invitation. I said, nah, I didn't know where he was. Man, congratulations. I said, you married? No, nah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm player player, man. <laughs> I said, you what? I'm player, man, I'm still, man, I'm out here, man. You know, I'm in the game, man. I'm player player. I said, I said, God, how old are you now? He said, yeah, man, I... I just made 70. I said, man, look, I don't need no harm. At 70, you ain't gonna play a player. You a sugar daddy. <laughs> I got a lawyer. I got a professor. I got, I got a CEO. Well, I tell you what, baby. I got a mechanic. And guess what? He's good to me. And every night when he come home, he put them greasy hands on me and make me feel good. I want to say that. And he said here, he said here, and Moses said to the people, do not be afraid, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you will see no more forever. I'll finish this some other time. I'm finished. I'm, I'm, I'm finished. Touch somebody and say no more. Touch somebody and say no more. Whatever you, whatever you've been brought out of, God says, whatever was in 2019 that, that just kept you being distracted, God said no more. And you have to know that when God delivered you. Don't let see they were delivered from Egypt but they still had the mindset of Egypt. You got to get Egypt out of your mind. Come on Davis. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's prayer time. 